In 1980, we were so excited because we were chosen to go to the Olympics in Lake Placid. It just didn't seem like it was going to get any better than that. Going to the Olympics, you know, wearing a team uniform. I think we went in with that view that we were just going to take it in, enjoy it. And that's what we did. I mean, it, it actually turned out that we did pretty well. I mean, we finished fifth in those Olympics a lot higher than we thought we were going to do. We couldn't just turn up the next year at the same standard, we had to improve. And that was what made us want to give up our jobs and train full time. And we'd saved enough money to get us through for a season, for one year, um, from our jobs that we felt that we could pay for ourselves. But fortunately, the 1980 Olympics, the summer team didn't go and our city council had put by some money for that Olympic team. Therefore, the council had this fund of money that they didn't know what to do with. And we came along and they thought, we'll give it to them. Amazingly, it wasn't just for the next year, it was for the four years um, till the next Olympics. So it was like a dream come true and we couldn't, I don't think, I can't remember the exact amount of money and it's probably not a lot nowadays, but then it was just, you know, we were millionaires. <laughs> just work like crazy in this it's called an internet in Germany and it's like a boarding school where the winks are and we just lived there almost the whole year and just trained and, and saw an ice rink you know from from one extreme to the next almost locked into this ice rink all the time. Betty was you know like part of our close-knit partnership it was the three of us went everywhere together but then we gradually started to talk a lot with Courtney Jones and Bobby Thompson. Courtney Jones was a very influential person. He, he was a judge, but also he was, a, he was really a mentor as well. And certainly, as he was a costume designer, he very kindly, we asked him if he would um, advise us on costumes, because it's all part of the whole package. Out of that, we, you know, we went off to European Championships thinking, Okay, we maybe got a shot at some kind of medal, we don't know. We sort of skated the dancers and listened to the marks and thought, oh, well, they're pretty good marks. But we didn't listen to anyone else's marks. We made a rule, well, we didn't really make a rule of it. It was just unwritten that we, both of us used to go off separately to the dressing room. And I know Chris used to always cover his ears and I used to just busy myself and make noise so that I couldn't hear anything. And after the first compulsory, lo and behold, we found we were in first place. Now, bearing in mind that Moiseva Menenkov, Lena Chucks was still in, and then the second compulsory, and we were still ahead. And we thought, oh, wow, going to do the OD now, and okay, we'll start coming down. And, and after the initial, like, you know, thinking, oh, that's great, and then I was thinking, oh my God. I was terrified <laughs> because the next day I thought, well, we're going to go down. <laughs> anyway, after the OD, we were still in first place. And we were, we, I mean, at that point, we didn't breathe. We just wanted to walk around. Don't change anything. Don't move. And then the pressure mounted, obviously. Um. The thought of beating them or being able to beat them, I don't think it was in our heads. We just wanted to go out and do our best performance. Didn't really pay attention to anyone else's marks. And I remember. Um, our other team member, um, Karen Barber, who was the British number two dance couple, came into the dressing room and said, Jane, you're first. And I was like, no. We have a habit of listening to everybody else's marks like this. Have they done? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and um, so we didn't really know what the result was. And um, eventually Betty did come and tell us that from Great Britain, the leaders, Jane Torvald and Christopher Dean. They won the European Championship this year. They moved up very quickly in the last year, finishing fifth in the Olympics and fourth in the world. And they're in first place right now. Going from that European Championships, then going to the World Championships, we thought, okay, this is going to reverse. You know, we're going to America, Hartford, 
it's going to it's going to change around. Can we still do it? In between the two events, Chris had um, an injury, had a stress fracture, and um, was in an awful lot of pain. Um, but typical Chris, you know, wouldn't give up and just carried on. They are really covering that ice, you know. It doesn't look that way on television, but they're moving just with a few strokes from one end of the rink to the other. Just a little crack in his bone wasn't going to stop him <laughs> competing. <laughs> Of course, we didn't want any word of this at the competition because there's some feeling that, you know, if you have an injury, people are thinking, oh, oh yes, they're not skating quite as well as... Because it, it's just mentally, you know, puts the idea in someone's head. And so we didn't breathe a word of it. And again, the same thing, the same process, you know. <gasps> Don't breathe, getting to the free dance. We actually left the building at Hartford. We both walked out, went our separate ways, actually. I stayed in the dressing room. I think I did walk out a little bit, mainly to go and find Chris, I think. And I looked at Jane, and she looked at me, and we, neither of us knew, how did we do? Don't know, don't know. And we, as we were walking by people, we were kind of looking for reactions in their eyes, and nobody was sort of giving us any feedback. and. And we waited and waited um, until Betty came into the dressing room. And what was so, we were sitting together by this point, because I think there weren't many people around. We were sitting in one of the dressing rooms together. And uh, she came in and just said, oh, well, that's that, or something very sort of English and understated. And, oh, well, that's that. Betty came up to Jane and said, don't you think you ought to put your skates on, dear? Because the medal ceremony is going to happen in shortly. And she was talk to us like that and um, Jane said well <laughs> how do we do and she went you don't know you want I said, oh. <gasps> <laughs> well Torval and Dean were beautiful, magnificent.